FMD, the regions where FMD occurs now are fairly limited. Um, so really the impact of FMD as a disease very much depends on the endemic situation. So in endemic countries that implies that the virus or virus strains are circulating almost continuously. In that case the losses largely are on um, production. These are not always reported as much as you might think because it's more of a day-to-day -day issue that people are dealing with. They're aware of these things. It affects milk production if you've got dairy cows. It affects draft power if you're using animals for draft. In very young animals, you can actually see deaths. So when you have a new strain coming through that there's no immunity to, then you can actually see fairly severe morbidity and mortality, particularly in young animals. High-producing dairy areas is another Another particular segment of the, the livestock sector where there's a big impact of FMD, you can lose milk production potentially, that doesn't re always recover. Those are in endemic regions. The other major significant impact is F in FMD is when there's an epidemic and that can happen in regions where there is either no FMD or very little FMD. So large parts of the world now are either historically or have gained freedom through gradual control programs, vaccination possibly, and are now free and they trade as free nations. So you can imagine if M FMD comes into one of those countries. It's a very significant yeah. impact, not only in the direct cost of controlling an epidemic outbreak, which is fairly significant. Most developed countries would now use culling policies. You can potentially ring vaccinate. But the biggest impact probably overall is the impact on loss of uh, the disease-free status, which then impacts the ability to trade with other countries of similar disease-free mm. status. So the, the basis of most FMD prevention is around prevention of introduction. So if you're a, a region or a country that's free, a lot of time and effort is, is um, placed on making sure that trading partners are also of the similar status to you. So that's a key if you're an, um, an FMD free area is to keep the virus out. If you're in an endemic region, the best you can do really is your own limited biosecurity. So being aware of a uh, disease situation with your neighbours, if you hear about FMD in the locality, then trying to reduce the movement of people or um, straw, bedding, feed onto your farm from areas where you think there may be infection. And that's just good biosecurity practice because FMD can be carried in by people, on people's shoes, under their fingernails, it can come in on food. It's a highly contagious virus. So biosecurity is probably a good basic. Obviously on top of that, in an endemic region, I think the recommendation would have to be to vaccinate with an appropriate vaccine. That's probably the safest. Uh, situation you have but in situations where there isn't a vaccine or it's not readily available or it hasn't been adopted then the best you can do really is biosecurity. FMD vaccines, they're inactivated vaccines and um, by and large the recommendation is to give a two-shot vaccination, primary vaccination course, which will then need repeat immunisations over time to keep up the animal's immunity. So obviously if you just consider that profile, a very clear improvement would be to have a vaccine with a longer duration of immunity and also just a single shot initial primary vaccination. So that would be an extremely good advantage. The other aspects of FMD vaccines are apart from a relatively short duration of immunity, uh, is their stability. So that limits the shelf life of the vaccine. So a, a vaccine that came forward with a longer shelf life would certainly be more useful in the field. Um, and that may encourage um, improved distribution processes. The other aspect of FMD, which is often a concern, is that vaccinated animals, if they come across infection, can become persistently infected. And the big concern and a lot of the international trade regulations around FMD are written because of this fear of a, um, an animal that's been exposed to the virus, still carrying the virus, and then being able to establish another infection. So a vaccine that could actually clearly prevent the chances of an infected animal becoming a persistently infected animal would also be seen as a big advantage. Mm -hmm.